Okay, so I just, uh, this is Greg. He's part of the Las Vegas EUC group. Hey, Greg. What's up, Greg? Uh, so we were just talking about chargers because I don't fully understand how battery works and balancing. And I think you gave me some, some really good feedback because, so <clears throat> we're talking about fast chargers and we're talking about cell balancing. And some people in the group were fast charging, but the wheel only went up to like 93% and stopped there. Right. And, and, the, and I didn't understand why, and then you gave an answer. So the reason why fast charging is bad and good at the same time, because it's made for long distance trips with your buddies and you want to charge up fast so you can get where you need to be. But the thing is, you never can get it to 100% or maybe 90% because of the way the cells are, because everything has different cells. So that means like different battery packs. Some mills have multiple battery packs. And then what happens with that is like one and two, like this is maybe the left side battery and this is the right side battery. As you notice, this one's kind of fuller than the other one. Yeah. So saying we did a fast charge, hook it up, and then it's like, wow, uh, my fast charger stopped. I turn on my wheel and it shows it's only at 87%. But if this battery already topped off to the maximum, the charger is going to see that maximum and turn it off, even though this battery is not at maximum. The reason why is because when you do a, crack, um, a quick charge, it will potentially charge the, the, uh, the fuller one first before it goes to the lower one. Okay. Only, only way to fix that if you go to a lower amperage and charge it slow so that way they're more simultaneously even when it's charging. Yeah, so like with the way that the batteries are connected, so you'll end up connecting the batteries or the way the batteries are lined up. Sometimes it's through one battery and then, or so like charger to one battery to the other battery and then to another battery. So okay, so it has to move that, through the current. Move through, so yeah. if this was the cable, uh, it will move from that side yeah. and it will move through all the batteries. Right. Right. So then if you're flushing like a crazy amount of power into one battery, mm. that's going to top off before these two end uh, up catching up. So when the, this one is full, it stops. Right, then it'll stop. Yeah, and that's why so it shows 93% because these batteries behind in the chain are not full. Right, correct. So how do you fix that, Greg? So the best way to fix it, it's kind of like running your wheel a little bit lower to like 50% to like start over again and then go to your lowest setting and charge it through that way. Sometimes you might have to do it twice. Like when I try to do my wheel with a quick charger, I got it to like 87% and it wouldn't go any higher. Uh, try to go back to the stock charger at the regular three amp. Yeah. And it kind of made it up to like a 98. So the next time when I rode, got it down to like 60%, charged it again with my slow charger and now it's back to 100. Okay. So not all the time it'll fix it when you try to go back to uh, slow charging, but sometimes you might have to just drain it and do it again. If you have the time, if you have the time to charge it one amp, sometimes that's a lot more beneficial if you have the time. Um, uh -huh. Cause again, if it's, it's, I, I explain it by saying like, if you're pouring water into a sponge, if you're dumping it onto the sponge, then it won't necessarily be able to absorb, but the surface is going to get wet. And then once the whole surface is wet, then it's going to consider, or that would be like considering the battery fully charged already, even though the inside of the sponge isn't really wet. So then if you ran it like trickle, if you're like just trickling water onto a sponge, then it'll spread a lot more evenly throughout the sponge. And that's kind of the same thing as the battery. So if you run it at one amp, if you have the option, then go for it. If, mm. uh, but again, if you're trying to rush and you have like an hour left to charge top off your wheel so you can continue riding with everybody for however many miles, do the quick charge, but then whenever you get the chance to, just do a trickle charge again. Uh, Whenever you have free time. So what is it like when you when you drive Tesla? And I know they probably work differently, but they're saying that uh, you should mostly just charge it up to eighty percent. Mm. Uh, to to it's what Tesla recommends. Yeah, to do it at eighty percent kind of keeps it more level, so it kind of stays optimizing. Um, keeping it at eighty percent doesn't overcharge the battery. What, what I mean by overcharge the battery is like when you ride down the hill yeah. at eighty percent. You, there's no way you can go spike that or pass it. Oh. Some people go like 90 or 100 and then they probably live up a hill and they go down the hill and then all of a sudden they're like, my wheel cut out, why did my wheel cut out? Because it overcharged, caused a spike and then... Uh, Does that happen out. to all wheels? 
They killed it. Uh, I think it happened to uh, Law with his 60 necks when he was overcharged. What, what happened? So, I had my wheel topped off at maybe 100%. Rode down uh, this one street going over it at night, like 95%. Um, we ended up at this like BMX pump track. So then I was riding the pump track, and then on a downward slope, I ended up, uh, I ended up going down the slope and then went charging over past 100 because of the regenerative braking. Yeah. Uh, problem with that was it was freaking out. It was like, oh, I'm already at 100%. I don't want to take any more energy. Uh, so I'm just going to shut off. So wheel shut off and then ended up messing up my ankle a little bit <laughs> just from the uh, landing. But, but, but that, it's not an issue. Let's say that if you're down a really long hill, you start at 50%. Yep. And at the very end, like there it comes at 100 and your wheel cuts out. That means it you, can you cannot go downhills yeah. then. Something like that, it's really hard to avoid. Um, if it's like a really slight incline and you can really manage it, what you can do is just kind of punch it out and then force the battery to really stress out more. So then you're using more energy prior to your braking. And then whenever you brake, then that'll give you a little bit of regen. Um, but if you're on like a more steep incline constantly, then just to get a little bit less, then if you do like serious, some serious carving, then at least you can expend more energy while carving going downhill to be able to uh, charge or re regen slower. Is there, is there some tip uh, for how you should manage your batteries to make them last longer? Is there anything like... Well, imagine your battery for lasting longer is like 80%, but we, like where we live, we live in Nevada, so it gets really hot here. So keeping your, um, your wheels inside a house or is at least room temperature, like 70 or 80 degrees kind of helps it. Um, I know batteries don't like the cold either, so you just got to keep it with you in the house or climate control and then when you store... So not in the garage? A garage gets in Vegas, we get too hot, so it's better to keep it in a room, like in the lobby or some, uh, in a hallway or something. Mm. I heard that in car repair places, they're saying that in Vegas is normal that the batteries last just for a couple of years. Or the, the reason why is it gets super hot and then super cold. Every time when it changes climate, that's when the batteries actually fail. Oh. So when it gets hot, I see a lot of cars come in because yeah. the battery failing. And vice versa, when it gets super cold, cars come in because the batteries are failing. Oh. So is it, our real technology is a bit different, kind of different kind of batteries that we have in cars. But if you want to keep it to last a lot longer, it's best to keep it at room temperature. When yeah. when do you think it's time to change the batteries you on get, your wheel? When you time to change the batteries, when your battery is not holding charge. Like you charge your wheel, you go down the street and you check, oh wow, I was at 90, now I'm at 50%. <laughs> that's, that's it. And it's it'll just die quicker. Yeah. It'll just not hold charge. Uh, when you ride, it just completes it really fast, and there's, when, there's nothing you can do. You just gotta replace the batteries. All right. But the technology of what wheels we have now, it's it's not proven yet. We nobody really tested to see how long a battery can last on these wheels, and to to say when I need to change my batteries. Mm. So usually the the motherboard always goes first before the batteries. Oh. So uh, it guess, burns out. Yeah, people burn out motherboards before the battery goes out. So oh. the last wheel I know of had 5,000 miles. The motherboard went out before the battery did. And then he put a new motherboard in it, and he's good and new, still riding around. Wow. No, no issues. And what wheel is that? Uh, Nokia. Uh, Nokia. Uh, Nokia. Nikola? Nikola. 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 Nokia 337. All right, guys. So, so the takeaway here is that uh, th these are cells and they go in in an order uh, so if the, the cell before the other cell is full then this one is not going to be full and not going to be charged so that's why you get 90 percent and the fix is uh drain your battery and then slow charge a couple of times yeah yeah battery, slow charge a couple of times um in theory Every 10 charges, you're supposed to charge it to 80%, keep it there, and then you do 100% and make sure you do it right um, afterwards. That keeps the, the durability of the battery of, for memory, as they say. Um, but other than that, just keep it cool. Don't get it too hot, don't get it too cold. Uh, when you store it, but obviously when you ride it, you know, know what happens. But cool. That's about it. Thank you, Greg. No problem.